What is up, y'all? It is Jerry from Team Unco Studios, back again with another MPC Beats, very basic tutorial for you all using the MPC Beats software. Well, the day has arrived. I know that everybody's been waiting for the sequencing videos, and we are finally here. Um, it's been a long time coming. I've been doing a lot here at the studio. We don't just make the MPC beat stuff. We also do a number of different things here at the studio. So I, I apologize for the little bit of a wait on sequencing. But now that we're here, let's go ahead and jump right into this, okay? I'm going to probably make a couple of videos on sequencing just to make it a little bit easier so everybody can understand because sequencing is fairly complicated. But once you figure out how to do it, it's really, really simple, okay? So just to kind of start this off here, what is sequencing, right? What is a sequence? Um, these are all really great questions and I'm sure the most asked questions when it comes to MPC beats. Sequencing is just another fancy way of arranging a song, okay? And when I mean arranging, I mean uh, intro, a verse, chorus, you know, verse, chorus, bridge, out, right? That's, uh, you know, an arrangement, all right? The sequences in, the, in that arrangement are the different parts of that full song, the verse, the chorus. Those are the sequences, okay? The way that we are going to use it here on MPC Beats is just by copying the same sequence a bunch of times and then arranging them within that sequence, okay? I know it sounds confusing, but we're going to get into it, all right? Now, when you're thinking about arranging in MPC Beats, there's a few different ways that you can do it. The two main ways that you can do it are linear arrangement, meaning you just have 64 bars that you can see on your grid, the whole all 64, and you use something like track mutes or something to be able to bring things in and out throughout the 64 bars. I have a video on that. I will leave it at the end um, as one of the end screens so you guys can check that out. That's a good way to kind of work your way into arrangement, okay? But with sequencing, it's more of a stacking arrangement, all right? So we're kind of just going to be stacking sequences on top of each other, all right? Um, and then at the end of our sequencing, when we're done with all of our sequences and we want to hear the whole song together, we're going to put them on a linear timeline in song mode, all right? Again, like I said, I know it sounds confusing, but we are going to totally get into this and we're going to make sure that hopefully by the end of sequencing, everybody will kind of have a different idea and a different approach on arranging in MPC beats. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into this. All right, so if we look down on the screen here, you'll notice I've got up just this little, um, you know, kind of sequence here. It's nothing major. It's just three tracks. I've got a little bit of pluck here, okay? Kind of got this little pluck line here, all right? And then I've got some drums here, okay? Nothing super crazy. And then I've got a little bit of a key line here, all right? And I'm sorry for the audio. I know the audio in the last couple of videos hasn't been the greatest, but a lot of the tutorials that we're doing right now are not really about the audio. They're, they're about what we're learning on the screen. So the audio will get better as we start getting into like audio stuff when we're doing mixing and whatnot, all right? So, but this is our sequence right now, okay? It's three tracks of four bars, okay? So like I said, if you just apply that math to this, here it is right now, tracks, bars. So this is our sequence right here, all right? So let's listen to the whole sequence together. This is it. Okay, so that's our sequence. That that four bar loop is our sequence, all right? So let's go ahead and start applying sequencing to this, all right? So the first things we're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that all of your tracks are labeled, okay? So if you'll notice, I've got pluck here, drums here, keys, okay? It's just gonna be so much easier in the long run when you are working on your sequences and you know what is what. So this is the first thing right here. Make sure your tracks are labeled, all right? The second thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we're on sequence one here, okay? So you can see I'm already on sequence one, which is currently this sequence, all right? So the first thing is copying your sequence, all right? How do we do that? Now, 
normally when you're doing an arrangement, like in the last arrangement video, you would just go to your edit here, you would go to sequence, and then you would go to double the length. And it's just going to take this four bars, and it's just going to make it eight bars, and then eight bars to 16, and on and on and on, right? Well, we're not going to do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to come down this list and go to copy sequence right there, okay? So again, I'm going to do it one more time. If you go to your edit, you go down to sequence, and then you go down that list to copy sequence, all right? And go copy sequence. Now, this little kind of window is going to open up here that says copy content of sequence one, which is this sequence that we're working on, okay? And over contents of sequence what sequence you want it to, to be copied onto, right? So right now it's saying I want to take the sequence from one, right? Which is, again, like I said, what we're working on. And I want to copy that to sequence three. Well, we don't want it to do that. We want it to copy to sequence two, right? Which is the next sequence in the order. So you would push the little arrow, go to sequence two. That looks good. And for our second sequence, let's say we're going to have that as our verse. So let's say our sequence one is going to be our intro and our sequence two will start our verses. All right. So we're going to go ahead and go because this is the second sequence and we're going to go do it. Okay. And now you'll notice nothing happened. But if you go to your sequence window here, you'll notice now it says two verse, right? So we are currently on our second sequence now. But if I go back here, you'll notice I'm on sequence one. Now, nothing is happening here right now because they're just copies of each other, right? But if we wanted to kind of, you know, start to change things, we can just by simply going to your, let's say we're going to take the drums out on the intro, okay? So if you just simply go to your drums, okay? And now we can go ahead and just take all of these drums out. Okay, so let's just delete those. Okay, go back to your track view. You'll notice I don't have any drums. Well, I've got some kick there, okay, which is fine because this is just an example. I've got that kick there. So now if I play. Okay, so that's kind of what we got. And that sounds cool for an intro, right? Now, if you notice when I go to sequence two, all right, to the verse, Boom, all of my drums are back here, okay? This is how sequencing works. We're able to work each one of these individually, and then when we get into song mode, we're just gonna put them together and it's gonna play them back to back to back, okay? So that right there in a nutshell is kind of how sequencing works. You, you wanna first duplicate these copies and make a stack of your sequences, okay? So now that I've got my verse here, I'm going to go ahead and go now. Well, I can stay on sequence two also because they're just copies of the sequence, right? So let's go ahead and make another copy of this and add it as our course. So if I go to edit, I go down to sequence again, whoops, down to sequence and down to copy sequence again. It's going to now copy another one of these to my third sequence here. Okay, so that looks fine. But instead, I'm going to put chorus. Okay, and then we can go ahead and say, do it. Okay, and now you'll notice I've got three sequences here. I've got sequence one, verse, and chorus, all right? So now I'm gonna go back to the first sequence, right? Which was this little thing we had here. So that, so that I can identify that, I'm gonna go ahead and rename it now, intro. So now we know this is our intro right here, okay? So I've got my intro. I've got my verse and I've got my chorus, okay? So let's say now for my verse, okay, this is our intro, right? Again, whoops, let's get out of here. Okay, so this is the intro, which sounds cool, right? So now let's go ahead and go to the verse here. And let's say for the verse, I wanna start adding a little bit more drums in, okay? So I'm gonna go to my home here and I'm gonna go ahead and just start taking sections of this out, I guess. I don't know, I'm making this up, completely making this up right now, okay? Now, so this is what I have now, okay, for this part. Okay, that sounds pretty cool, and I like the way that sounds, but 
I don't necessarily want it to just play this same sequence twice, right? I want it to be a little bit longer, but I want this section to stay there and then come in with the full amount of music on the last four bars of the first verse. So I know it's confusing. Just follow along with me here, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is go Command Z and bring back my drum set, okay? So here's my drum set now. The full set is there. So if I go ahead and go back to my track view, and now I'm gonna take this, this sequence and I'm gonna double it, just like we would for a regular arrangement, okay? So let's go now back to edit, okay? And let's go to sequence, and let's go to double the length. Now I have got double the length here, but if you notice on my first sequence, that did not change. It stayed at four. So again, this is another benefit for sequencing. You know, you can add more um, bars, you could take bars away. There's just more options that you have than doing a linear arrangement, all right? So let's go ahead and go back now to our verse. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the same thing I was just doing, and I'm gonna take sections of this out here. Let's just delete there, okay? And I'm gonna say we can delete maybe like here, okay? So let's delete that. And now I have what I want in my arrangement. It's gonna kinda of start to come in a little bit here, and then we're gonna come into the full thing right at the starting of the fifth bar, okay? So here is now the first verse after the intro, okay? Now we have the whole thing in right here. Okay, and that's kind of what our verse sounds like right now. Now, if I only want this for the first verse, that's okay, you can do that. And so you would say, well, how do I do this? Am I just gonna copy this same verse and then re-add these drums back in? What you would do is just go now to your chorus track, because remember, this is the exact same copy of the very first sequence that we did, right? And you would just copy this sequence, right? So edit. Now let's go sequence and go copy sequence. Okay. And now we can go, that looks good, right? I'm taking this third, you know, chorus part and I'm duplicating that to my fourth sequence. And instead what we're going to do is we're going to go verse two. Okay. And now do it. Now, with this verse, if I don't want those little pockets taken out, what I would do is just still come over here, hit my sequence, and double the length because the verses are eight bars now. And now, okay, that's our second verse. And now if you go back to our first verse, you have these little gaps, right? So now we've made the first and the second verse sound a little bit different just by changing the sequences, all right? So that, again, like I said, kind of in, in overall is the way sequencing works. You're just able to stack these, these you know, um, sequences on top of each other and work them each individually, all right? So that's the basics of sequencing right there and how it kind of works and is applied in MPC beats, all right? On the next video, I'm gonna start showing you how to put this into song mode and start you know, getting our sequences and everything on a timeline so we can actually start hearing them. And then I'm also going to show you how we can kind of spice things up, maybe change the chorus a little bit from just it being that, you know, regular four bars. Maybe we'll change keys or something and some other kind of little tips and tricks on sequencing and how you're able to do it flawlessly on MPC beats and be able to create beautiful music and, um, and take it to the next level, you know? So we hope this was helpful, y'all, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace and love from all of us at T-Monko Studios. Later.